morning and thanks for joining us. It's Thursday, August 9th. I'm Lauren Barnes. I'm Joe Moreno. As you guys get set to move on this Thursday, we've got some movie tickets to give out. We've got other news to get to as well, but a lot of weather to start things out, of course. Beth Finello in the weather lab this morning for Elisa. She's got your forecast first. Good morning and happy Thursday. We have some patchy fog across the area, mainly around the state line and in counties to our west. That is also where we're going to see rain chances through much of today as well. Because we had some rain yesterday over the last 24 hours, that's why we have that fog out there. Temperatures right now in Springfield at 68, dew point at 64, so feeling a little humid, a little sticky out there. And that's how it is across much of the Ozarks. Temperatures in the middle to upper 60s and those dew points also in the middle to upper 60s. You could see where the dew points are a little bit higher. Again, that's where those rain chances are going to stick around for much of today. Uh, temperature wise, we're going to see temperatures reach the upper 90s. A couple places are really going to struggle to reach that. Those are the places that will see more cloud coverage and higher rain chances. I'll time all of that out for you coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Beth. Making news this morning, firefighters continue to head to California to help battle more than a dozen major wildfires. High winds, heat, and dry land are factoring into what may become the worst wildfire season in history. A man arrested for allegedly starting one near Los Angeles will also be in court today. CBS's Laura Podesta has the story. Police in Southern California arrested a man they say started the Holy Fire, which has burned down 13 cabins and forced the evacuation of several communities since it began Monday. 51-year-old Forrest Gordon Clark could face life in prison if convicted. This is a monster who would go out with low humidity and high wind and the highest heat temperatures this time of the year and intentionally set the forest on fire. An hour after the fire started, Clark told a photographer he did not know how it began. I just woke up, dude. I got burned. So okay, okay, I so woke up and my stuff was all on fire. His home is reportedly the only one left standing in the community. And up you go. Two of his neighbors had to be rescued while trying to evacuate Monday. I'm upset with him right now. I, I'm really upset. I mean, not that it took everything I had. 100 miles north of San Francisco, officials say the Mendocino complex, the largest wildfire in state history, won't be fully under control until September. It's, it's stressful. It's hard being out here in the heat. A lot's going through my mind, a lot, a lot. I mean, look at the way we're living because of it. More than 14,000 firefighters are working throughout the state, including some from New Zealand and Australia. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. The car fire in the northern part of California is less than half contained. It's destroyed more than 1,000 homes and killed at least six people. To complicate matters for evacuees also at one shelter, there's been a norovirus outbreak, and 20 to 30 people had shown symptoms of that, which can cause vomiting, nausea, and stomach cramps. Moving on to some political coverage this morning, some Missouri farmers say they're losing money and are worried they could even lose their farms due to the trade war with China. Soybean prices have dropped by more than 20 percent. The Missouri Chamber of Commerce estimates Missouri could lose $880 million because of the trade war. Two farmers spoke at a town hall held by Senator Claire McCaskill yesterday. Both say they're losing business. I am been a farmer since 1951 that maybe this might be the first year that we're going in the red operating below cost will ultimately lead to selling the farm which is something that i'm trying to avoid and many other farmers are trying to avoid Senator McCaskill says what's in place now is not working. U.S. Senate candidate Josh Hawley says he supports President Trump's state. decision on tariffs, but that farmers deserve right better than they're getting right now. Both will be attending an event at the Missouri Farm Bureau headquarters in Jeff City tomorrow, where the group will consider which candidate it will be endorsing. An upset in the presiding commissioner race in Greene County as incumbent Bob Certain will not be on the ballot in November. We brought you that result yesterday. That's after his Republican challenger Bob Dixon won in the primary with 67 percent. Certain did release a statement saying it was an honor to serve the people of Greene County and also said, quote, there is much to be proud of, which includes 
creating a very strong foundation that I know will continue to be built upon. I look forward to the next few months of working hard to serve our citizens in an exemplary manner. Bob Dixon will face Democrat Sarah Lampe in November. And now that all the numbers are in on Tuesday's primary election, we've learned it drew a historic number of voters out in Greene County. In August of 2014, just over 39,000 voters came out for the primary that year. But this year's primary drew just under 60,000, surpassing it by nearly 20,000 voters. Greene County Clerk Shane Scholler says the 37% voter turnout was thanks in large part to the vote on the Pitbull Ordinance that has gone back and forth in Greene County for a year now. That question, and that certainly we planned for that. We knew there would be increased um, turnout inside the city because of that issue, and then of course the statewide right to work issue. Um, what we didn't anticipate is just you know how many more voters came out that in any previous election it does not compare to. Some polling places even ran short on Republican ballots, causing longer wait times. And many also used the new technology known as the Express Vote Machine. Putting crime in focus now for you. A high-speed police chase in Springfield led to a crash downtown. Three people were hurt and one was arrested. Police tell us that person arrested is being questioned in a deadly shooting. The Springfield News leader said that detectives spotted that person in a car at Elm Street and National Avenue. They drove off and ended up crashing right in front of St. Agnes Catholic Church on Jefferson Street. This picture that you see from the news leader shows the damage to that car and the front of it obviously badly damaged. Police tell us there were three people in the car. They were all not, they were all injured, but not seriously. And you may remember we told you about this deadly shooting on Sunday. 32-year-old Marcus Gilbert was shot and killed at a house on North Grant, just south of Scott Street. Officers tell us they're questioning someone about this shooting, but that person has not been charged. We'll keep you updated as we learn more.